What's happening, family? Dr. Joe here. Hope each of you are well and blessed. This is a PSA announcement. I believe this particular uh, presentation is something that all of us need to know, that all of us need to be aware of, that we all need some type of informative heads up, for lack of better words. But uh, there is some news that is relevant for all of us. This is something that was released on yesterday. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, relaxes blood donation guidelines for men who have sex with men. Uh, this essentially means that people who are uh, considered gay men, especially people regardless of sexual orientation, will be able to give blood uh, without adhering to some of the guidelines that were in place specifically designed to protect the public. All right. So this is something that all of us need to be aware of. All right. Now, number one, this is not a diss towards uh, gay people, the gay community, uh, a person who identifies as gay, uh, lesbian or, or whatnot. This is not a dig uh, because at the end of the day, this particular um, issue that has now manifested doesn't only impact people who are straight, people who are married, people who are single, but also people who are gay as well. Uh, now, the first thing that we have to understand is um, or ask the question, you know, why is this an issue? It's an issue because we know that uh, the demographic that has the highest the highest percentage or, or likelihood of HIV AIDS, not only to contract it, but also to transmit it are gay and bisexual men. Men who have sex with men have the highest occurrence of HIV AIDS. We know that factually. But also men who have sex with men who are also bisexual, meaning that they're having sexual intercourse with straight women, it's, it's a high degree or percentage of HIV AIDS transmission. Okay, we know and we understand that. But now, uh, the FDA is relaxing blood donation guidelines for men who have sex with men. Listen to this. Gay and bisexual men in monogamous relationships can donate blood in the United States without abstaining from sex under a federal policy finalized Thursday by health regulators. The Food and Drug Administration guidelines ease decades old restrictions designed to protect the blood supply from HIV. The agency announced plans for the change in January and said this week the new approach can now be implemented by blood banks. OK, after years of protest, FDA blood, uh, FDA makes blood donations easier for men who have sex with men. Instead, all potential donors, regardless of sexual orientation, sex or gender, will be screened with a new questionnaire that evaluates their individual risk for HIV based on sexual behavior, recent partners and factors. Political donors, excuse me, potential donors who report having anal sex with new partners in the last three months will be barred from giving until a later date. The FDA said that the new policy reflects the latest scientific evidence and is in line with rules of the UK and Canada. All right. Listen to this quote. The implementation of these recommendations will represent a significant milestone for the agency and the LGBTQ plus whatever the, the other initial is community. Dr. Peter Marks, director of the FDA's Center for Biological Therapy, said in a statement, gang, listen, we're looking at living in a time where. Decisions are being made that are putting you and me and the vast majority of our public at risk. This is a politicized issue that makes absolutely no sense. The whole purpose of these guidelines that were in place was to protect the public. We know that a person who contracts HIV, that that particular virus can remain dormant. But that person can still have levels of uh, uh, of a virus that can be transmitted. We know this. And all of these different articles that are coming out on this is saying that the reason why that was in place was to protect the public. It's ridiculous. The times that we're living in. So being that that is what it is. And, you know, this is PBS News Hour. It was um, published on PBS.org. But this is made national news. But. The question that I want to 
answer on this platform during Life TV, a place of, of light in these times of darkness, is what should we do? I believe personally that if you're a person that you're preparing to have some type of surgery, some type of procedure, any type of thing that could require someone else's blood, that we need to be doing more research and consider self-banking our own blood. There is a term and there is a thing. Let me tell you something. In a couple, of, if I were having a surgery, what we can do is when you reach out to your physician, your general, your, your GP, you can ask about banking your own blood and you can have your blood banked before um, that particular procedure. Human blood can be banked for some odd uh, six weeks, 40 plus days, some 42, 45 days, somewhere along in that. I'm sure uh, there are professionals who can fact check that. But let me tell you something. I do not want to live in a world or be a part of a medical system that is open to allowing um, risky, a risky demographic to donate blood and I potentially get that tainted blood or you potentially get that tainted blood or our loved ones potentially getting that tainted blood. It's a it's a, a it's an ignorant decision. It is it is asinine that we're sitting up here having this conversation. But I wanted to bring this to your attention for those of you who do not know. And I want to just give you a suggestion to say, hey, if you're going to be having a type of medical procedure, let's be let, let, let's 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 bank our own blood because I don't want nobody to give me nothing you cannot take back. This is not a dig against anybody. But like at the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to keep my health and I know you're trying to keep your health and with awareness. And hopefully this particular bit of information can help to inform you guys and, 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 and gals who will be having procedures, if you reach out to your GP, ask them, hey, uh, what are the guidelines or can you give me more instructions about banking my own blood? You don't even have to get into this. But if this is something that can help keep us safe and healthy, then that's what we're going to do. Until the next time, be well and we be blessed and we'll see you then. Peace.